were going to get into the connection between missing and murdered indigenous women and girls and what Suzanne was speaking to before uh, the destruction of our planet. So Suzanne, do you want to just dive into that? What does that mean for you? Sure. Like I hear and I see in a lot of the newspapers and even the inquiry that's happening that's kind of gone off the rails is that there's hmm. 800 missing or 1200 missing and working with grassroots indigenous women's organizations there's like some real champions out there that are out there looking for their aunties their nieces their family members um, in a database collected as of 2011 there's over 4520 missing and murdered and taken indigenous women and girls in this country hmm. Um, I think that a huge part of that is when we can rape and extract things from Mother Earth, that when we do it to the women, it's not that far of a stretch. Mm. And I think as Indigenous women whose identity is tied to the land and the water, we are obstacles to that land and the water. And I think there's a very concerted effort by the federal government, by our RCMP, by our police forces to not protect Indigenous mm. women that we are those obstacles and they see us as a threat. And I see how magnificent and beautiful our Quayog are within our communities, how strong and resilient. And they have to get rid of us because we're that final tie to the land. Mm. And it didn't happen through the Indian Act because we're still here. It didn't happen through residential school because we're still here. So now what's happening? And we're disappearing at an alarming rate. And I think another big piece to that is um, systemic bias and racism within institutions, whether it's health and healing within hospitals, whether it's the service agencies that are there to help and support Indigenous women because we're the most highly victimized across this nation. We were legislated so that we have no land base. Our culture was taken from us. Our children was taken from us. So when we reach out to service agencies for help, what biases and prejudices are we trying to overcome just by walking through those yes. doors? Whether it's um, whatever services, um, whether it's education, justice, corrections, wherever we're going, we're always begging for crumbs. Mm. We're always like the, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel. And I'm sure when our ancestors signed treaty with our guests here that were coming to our land, that that wasn't the intent. Mm. And I don't think that the Canadian government um, really bargained with us in an equal way. And I think we hear a lot of buzzwords right now about truth and reconciliation. For me, as an Indigenous woman in this country, Canadians have a lot of reconciling to do. And I am magnificent as a woman. I'm a traditional knowledge keeper. I carry this traditional ecological knowledge. The women I know, we carry the knowledge that can cleanse the water from Mother Earth, mm. but we're negated and we're devalued. And that's been happening since the fur trade. Mm.